In this video, we'll talk about measuring the magnitude and phase differences between two sinusoidal signals. This concept will be important to us for the rest of our careers as engineers. Analysis of the steady state response of a system to a sinusoidal input is an extremely important class of problems. Since these types of problems nearly always boil down to determining the magnitude and phase differences between two sinusoidal signals, it's important to understand these concepts in physical terms, rather than simply as mathematical relationships. This video and its associated labs are intended to provide this physical insight. In this course, we will consider the two signals being measured to be the input and output of some electrical circuit. However, it's important to realize that the terms input and output are somewhat arbitrary and ultimately are at the discretion of the person analyzing the system. Inputs and outputs can really be any pair of signals in a system. These signals can be voltages or currents in electrical systems, pressures and flow rates in fluid systems, displacements and velocities in mechanical systems, or temperatures in thermodynamic systems. The concepts presented here are extremely general and used nearly all engineering fields. First, let's briefly review the basics of what we mean by a system steady state sinusoidal response. If we apply a sinusoidal signal to a circuit, eventually all of the voltages and currents in the circuit will be sinusoidal signals with the same frequency as the input. For example, if we apply a signal with some frequency omega, an amplitude A, and a phase angle theta, any other signal in the circuit will eventually be a sinusoid with the same frequency, but possibly a different magnitude, say B, and a different phase angle, say phi. As we've seen in the textbook and lecture videos, it's mathematically convenient to express our signals in phase or form so that our sinusoids are expressed as complex exponentials. We've also seen that the relationship between our input and our output at some frequency can be expressed as a gain and a phase difference. These parameters can be used to characterize the behavior of the circuit at that frequency. Gain is defined as the ratio of the magnitude of the output sinusoid to the magnitude of the input sinusoid, while the phase difference is defined as the phase of the output sinusoid minus the phase of the input sinusoid. Now I want to talk a bit about choosing what we consider to be our input and what is our output. In general, since all signals in the circuit will be sinusoids, we can identify any signal as the input and any other signal as the output. Designating one signal to be the input and another to be the output simply tells us how to interpret the terms gain and phase. If we swap our definition, we simply invert the gain and change the sign on our phase. As an example, let's look at this circuit. We have a source in our circuit, so one possible obvious choice of input function would be the voltage across this source. If we choose this as our input and, rather arbitrarily, choose the voltage across this resistor as our output, our gain and phase will represent the relationship between these two parameters. However, this choice of input and output parameter is not unique. If we were, for example, interested in the relationship between the voltage across the resistor R1 and the voltage across the capacitor, we could easily define one of these as the input and the other as the output. Which is defined as which simply tells us how to interpret the resulting gain and phase. Now let's take a look at using measured response data to determine the gain between two signals. Suppose the two signals that we're interested in look like this. V in is the signal we're considering to be our input, and V out is the signal we're considering as our output. The amplitude of the input sinusoid is delta V in, while the amplitude of the output sinusoid is delta V out. These two amplitudes are easy to measure using an oscilloscope. To calculate the gain between the input and output, we simply take the ratio of the output amplitude to the ratio of the input amplitude. Now let's take a look at using measured response data to determine the phase difference between two signals. It's important to notice that when determining the phase difference between two signals from measured data, the individual phases of the two signals are not important. This is contrary to the approach that we usually use to determine the phase difference mathematically. To determine the phase difference between two signals, we just need to measure the time delay between the two signals. This time delay is just the time between two points with the same phase on our signals. For this example, we've just chosen two points where the signals are at their minimum values. We can calculate the phase difference from this time delay by comparing it to the period of the signals. Since the time period of a sinusoid corresponds to a 360 degree or 2 pi radian phase difference, we can calculate the phase difference corresponding to the time delay by taking the ratio of the time delay to the total period and multiplying that by 360 degrees. 
or two pi radians if we prefer to work in radians. Now let's take some measurements and see how they correspond to gain and phase difference. Here's an example circuit we'll use to illustrate these concepts. We'll define our input as the applied voltage and our output as the voltage across this 10 microfarad capacitor. Please keep in mind that this choice is somewhat arbitrary. If we choose two other parameters in the circuit, we'll generally end up with different magnitude and phase responses. Here's our physical circuit. This is the 100 ohm resistor. Here's our 1.1 ohm resistor. The capacitor connects this terminal to ground and the inductor connects this terminal to ground. We're using channel one of the waveform generator to apply voltage to the circuit. Channel one of our scope is measuring the difference between this voltage and ground, while channel two is measuring the voltage difference across the capacitor. I'm going to apply a two kilohertz sinusoidal signal with an amplitude of 3.3 volts as my input. On my oscilloscope, I'll use a time base of 100 microseconds per division and a vertical scale of 1 volt per division on channel 1 and 500 millivolts per division on channel 2. I'll click Run to start acquiring data. Here are our input and output sinusoidal signals. In order to determine the gain, we need the amplitudes of the input and output signals. We can measure these easily by creating a measurement. Measuring the maximum values for both channel 1 and channel 2 give us the data that we need to get a gain. The gain is the maximum value of channel 1 divided by the maximum value of channel 2. In order to determine our phase difference, we need the time delay between the signals and the time period of either signal. Since both signals are the same frequency, we only need to measure one of them. We can get the period of the signals from our measurement. Just add a measurement giving the average period of one or the other signal. To get the time delay, I'll use cursors. Let's base our time delay on the maximum value of the two signals. Setting one cursor at the maximum value of channel one and the other cursor at the maximum value of channel two gives us a time delay between the two. To get the phase difference, just divide this time delay by our period and multiply that result by 360 degrees. 